Hello, my name is Barb Groff. I work for Echo Consulting, and today I'd like to walk you through the process of how to create an intake board in Monday.com. Intake sheet is great for when you have multiple projects and you want to keep track of all those that are coming in and if they're getting approved, move, getting moved down into different boards so that you can have the people work that project. So we're going to start with, I was, I'll go through a couple little things before we get going, just so you make sure you have that knowledge. So in Monday, what you can do is you can come in and create a new workspace. You can see that I have one set up here, but we could come in and create a new one just by clicking here and naming our workspace. And we'll just say new and we'll say add workspace. So you will need a workspace to start to make your boards. So now we have our new workspace and we would come in and add a board. So here we go here and we're going to call this a new project request or intake, intake board. And um, this is a great section here, select what you're managing. So everyone calls projects different things. So some people might call them leads, some might call them campaigns. I usually use this selection, which is projects. This is going to determine what your first column in that board is. So I'm just going to create my board real quick. And I'll show you that and then I'll go show you the one I've created. So this is what your new board would come at. They come in with three set columns, person, status, and date. Um, and you can see that I selected projects. So that's my name in my first column. Now I'm going to go back to the board I've created. So I have a workspace here and I have my new project request and approvals. So the first thing we need to do is we need to make columns that would be useful in understanding what that new project contains. What is it going to be about? What is the justification? Who needs to uh, approve it? When would you like it to start? We often include some budget and estimated hours of completion. So the first column is, is a people column. You can come in and change this name to by just clicking on it and you can change that name. I call it, you could call it requester, you could call it initiator. The next one is request status. So this is new requests and this company wants to use under consideration, approved and rejected. And then I have an automation set up and we'll get to that in a little bit of recording the date that this person sent this request in. The approver, we would assign who's going to be approving it. This is also a date record column, so it's a date that, that gets approved and this status changes to approved. These columns are important because this is when the person is submitting that request. What information you need as an approver or reviewer to say, understand what the project is about. Then we need a column that says, what is, you know, what's the goal of the project? Now these you can customize to your needs of what type flavor projects you have um, and recommendations. I love this column because you're asking your employees to kind of solve it for you instead of just submitting a request. Uh, then we do have a approved budget column. Now remember that this, that the number of columns you have, I like to call it, keep it simple. Keep it as simple as possible. You don't want to overwhelm them with 25 columns, it helps in adoption of, of a board use and project management if you keep it as simple as possible. Um, there are some best practices that I do suggest uh, that we have like a priority column so that the person knowing it knows this, that this is a fire drill. We add a column to the right and we're just going to add a text. Oops, add a column to the right. Where's text? There we go. We're going to add that to our board. So now we have our text column and I'm just going to call this. Oh, shoot. You know what? I should have made this a status column. Let's do that again. We're going to delete this. We come back here. We're going to add a column and we're going to call it status. And I'll show you why in a second. We're going to change this to priority. And I'll show you why we didn't use a text column. And then the priority we're going to make this. Oops. And change our settings, go we're going to edit labels and we're going to say this one's low 
and this one's medium, and this one's high. So the reason I didn't, and we're going to say apply. The reason I didn't use a text is it's a lot easier for reporting and dashboards to have a visualization. So we'll use status. Any other project management tools, you probably would use what's called the drop down menu. But we're going to use status. So now we have a priority column. Um, I also think that uh, we have a request date that's being recorded, but we probably want to know when the person needs this done by. So let's go in here and do something. Let's teach you something else while we're in here. Uh, we're going to change column type and we're going to change this to a date. So I just want you to be able to see how to do that. And we're going to say that this is the end date. And the end date is, means that what date do they need it done by? You could call it done date, you know, required date, whatever you want to call it. All right, so then I think we have enough columns that give us enough. The reason that we're building these columns out is the way that a request can get into this new board is two ways. Let's see, um, We now have all the columns set up in our new project request board. The way that you can enter in new requests is two ways. The first one is very manually. You would just come in and say that you have a new project and it's called Friday and I'm the requester. It's a new request. Lisa's going to be approving it. It's a medium and I need it done by the end of November. Then I would continue in and say that this project, and I'll give details for it. I would say what I need the, the outcomes to be and what my recommendations are. That's saved automatically. The second way is by forms. Um, a form is a submission form. It is used to submit the forms in a, via form instead of coming into the board. So many of your users might have access to the form, but they don't have access to the board. So that's the beauty of the forms. If I wanted to come in and create a new form, I would come here and I'm going to come up with a template that is based off of those columns we just built. Every column that you have is going to be here. To, I'm not going to get into how to customize a form, but I will show you real quick that you can edit them. You can change if you want to move this up or down, you can change the description of it. And then you can put, if you click here, you can add conditional formatting. So every single one is there. The other thing we can show you is not in this one, but over here, some, like, some of those columns we may not need for the person to see. So what we can come in and do is we can just come in and say hide that column. So right now the initiator initiator column is hidden. I think the status column, because obviously they don't know what the status is at this point, if it's been approved or not, so you would hide that one. So those are, that's the beauty of the form. The person comes down, I'm going to publish that, and at the bottom they hit submit, and then it automatically comes into the first empty row in this top section. So those are the two ways that we're going to get new requests in here. Let's talk about automations a little bit. One of the beauties of project management is that you want your projects to continue to flow without having a lot of manual steps. So we enter in automations. And the way that we do that is you can come up here and click into automations. I do have several set up here and I'll go through those with you and then I'll show you how to create a new one. So I have one when the status changes to approved, it's going to record the date. So I spoke to that one. When a request status changes to approved, I'm going to tell the person that's going to review it. So they know to come in here and move that project along. When a request status changes to rejected, I notify the person that submitted it so that they know they have to go back and redo that submission or talk to somebody to see what was missing. Then I have a bunch that are set up to when something comes into the top group, the, the new request group, it moves them down to the other groups as soon as the status changes. So if a status changes to approved, it'll go to the approved group. If it changes to under consideration, it would go to the under consideration group. So those are just nice ways to keep them flowing. 
This is the one that really is the project management suite tool and connect them in the selected boards. So what that means is if something comes down here and it gets approved, right? What it's gonna come down and get into the approved group. Then by the automation, it's gonna automatically move over. Come on. Yes. This automation is a great tool to keeping your data cohesive and moving projects along. So when a request comes in and it came into that top group request, it got approved, it's gonna move down to the approved group. And then we're gonna create an item, so a new item in a new board, our portfolio management project board. And then we're gonna connect the data. So with the connect, the data means that the data is, something changes in the portfolio board, it'll also get updated in this board that we're working on right now. So let me show you the portfolio. So it would get approved, right? It would come over here, it would move into this top group of upcoming projects. The project manager would get assigned, maybe some notes would be added, and then it would move down into current projects. When you update this, and let's say I change this to execution, that is going to update it back to the original request in our request board. No, it's not going to because we didn't approve it yet, but so it would update here too. So you're keeping the same data and one stop shop type of thing. Um, let me show you real quick how to make an automation. They're very simple. Monday makes it easy for you. Um, I'm going to call them changes, then notify someone. Notify someone. And then notify, you can add, which is great, a description of the what group it's in, the, the project name, the board that it's in, and then just say um, this task is now ready for your action and done and it's going to notify the person that it is uh, being shared, let's say. so we create coordination um i'm not going to create it though because it's going to mess up my board <laughs> so um, those automations are great to keep everything moving and keep it along so you don't have to send, we want to try and keep all our communication in the boards and out of emails and messaging. So that's basically how we start an intake board, how we keep our projects moving along and moving them into a project board. Um, I'll delve more into a project board on another video. But I hope this was helpful to you and please reach out to me at echoconsultingpm.com and we'd be happy to chat with you. Thank you so much.